Today we are glad and thrilled to have Simple Hardware and Pavel with us to present how to market Sigfox solution. We're going to share best practice and amazing use case that you can share right now. The idea is that we're going to share with you the best tips coming from Simple Hardware to help you to sell solution that looks simple, but as we know, it's not that easy to start an IoT project and to sell it. So you are in great hands with uh, Pavel today to give you all the best uh, practice about that. Don't forget, uh, don't be shy, go in the chat to ask your questions. We're going to do the question and answer session at the end of, the, um, of this webinar. So we're going to have like 30, 40 minutes max presentation and then the Q&A. The mic is yours, Pavel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Judith, for inviting us to present at this webinar. And I'm really glad that we have so many attendees of, the, of this webinar uh, in this pretty challenging times. Uh, we are a little bit lucky here in the Czech Republic that we did put the lockdown pretty, on, uh, pretty early on. So we have very, very few spread of the coronavirus, uh, very, very, very little spread of it in Czech Republic. And we are pretty safe. Uh, most of the companies partially working from the office and partially working from their from their homes, but the production is running, and we pray for all those that uh, are in lockdown or are ill. Or uh, has, uh, we have even some some of our employees' relatives are in UK are ill. So we pray for all, all those, and we hope that this will be overcome in a very short uh, time period. So back to the back to the back to the Sigfox because uh, we know that uh, Sigfox itself themselves uh, they are trying to help in this crisis and we we ourselves we delivered a uh, couple of thousands of devices uh, to Spain to help uh, to help in 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 this in, in, in this in this crisis. Uh, uh, but I will concentrate not on the coronavirus case, but I will concentrate on the general sales and marketing process. So uh, the, the format is, uh, again, we, we, I prefer to have Q&A, I prefer to answer questions and not to do only presentations, but really to, to answer what is, what, is your, what is your concerns and what are your experience and to share those. So don't, uh, don't uh, hesitate to open the questions anytime and we'll try to answer them either during the webinar or at the end. Uh, agenda, uh, I'll be talking uh, a little bit and specifically about the sales and marketing process of Sigfox use cases and business cases uh, because uh, I think that I have seen like hundreds of hundreds of use cases uh, both here in Slovakia in Switzerland and Austria uh, and worldwide basically because we are selling uh, devices and solutions worldwide so I have seen many of those and I think that I can I can come up with some conclusions uh, then I'll recap what you have known, but what is what needs to be understood, what are the Sigfox specifics. Uh, then I'll be talking shortly about the simple hardware and the use cases that we are tackling, and then we have a Q&A session. So one of the, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest mistakes that we do as Sigfox operators or customers or, or, or uh, uh, integrators is that we undervalue a lot of the, a lot of the sales process because we are most of the time people are very technical or are very i would say they are from the operator side of the business and they don't put enough pressure on the sales team they don't put enough procedures checklists onto the sales teams in order to qualify this discover to do proper pocs and to do uh, proper field deployment we have seen so many lost opportunities because people were just not putting enough time into the different stages uh, properly that it's a shame. Uh, for the sick force cases, you know, band is an old, it's an old concept uh, of budget authority need and time. In some of the use cases, it's a little bit old one because we are on the changing side of the sales. So we need to change the customers, but it still makes sense to really understand whether the customer has the budget for the use case, whether the people we are talking to, whether they have the authority 
but there's a real need for the solution because very often we see you know people love iot because it's they love games they like gadgetry they like gadgets so okay let's do the part tracking let's put it on on, on, on the pallets and when you ask them what's the return of investment what is the total cost of ownership they don't know they just want to know how oh, we'd love to know where is the where is the pallet so we need to do pallet tracking so really analyze the need and also analyze the, the time is it something that the company is just thinking about is it something is, is it is a three-year project or is it a three months project it's, it's very important to understand the time uh, the time size of the of the use case because very often what we have seen is that people are pressing oh we need to do poc in two days in two days we need to have the devices and then the, the whole business case or the whole sales process drags on for uh, for months and months and months and does not conclude so please really do uh, preparatory work and think about the budget whether the company has the budget about the authority whether the people you are talking to uh, can sign the deal or they need to go we have seen many times that you know the IT department, the POC was running beautifully, everything was working fine, and then they went to the board and the board told them, no, we don't have the budget, we are not going to approve it, and all the resources that salespeople invested it into it from both sides got lost. Also, really think about the need and about the time. So this is something that uh, the qualification that it's sometimes it's done, it's not done perfectly, but it's done. The second stage that we really propose and that we really foster is the discovery and the discovery is done in so few cases that we have seen that uh, basically it's the most under under prepared part of the sales process basically the outcome of a discovery should not be a poc the outcome should be a presigned agreement so as as the, you know you have always spend 80% 80, 80 of your time in preparation and 20% in the execution. People so much rush into the POC that they don't calculate total cost of ownership. They don't calculate return on investment. Uh, people need to understand that the IoT, it's not about devices. IoT is not about connectivity. IoT is not about uh, uh, smart, smart movements. The, the, the main thing what IoT is about is the digital transformation of a company. So transformation in their business processes, in transformation in how they process the data, what they will do with the data. IoT is just bringing new set of data into the companies and the companies need to understand what they will be doing with the data. When I take the example of the pallets that you want to track. So we have a company, oh, let, let's do the pallet tracking and when you ask them so what do you, what you will be doing if you know that the part is late with the customer it will be two days later with the customer when it ought to be so then the company they don't know should we preview the customer shouldn't we tell him should they get discount those are the, those are the far more challenging questions than the questions uh, regarding which device shall i use which iot platform shall, shall i use so really those business questions are really important to clarify before starting to do any POC because you do the POC of the path tracking and then the business part, they decide, oh, we don't know what to do with the data. We don't know how to visualize it. We don't know, should we put it into SAP or not to put it into SAP. So please really spend a lot of time in the discovery phase. The same with the device logistics and installation. You know, in many cases, even the, one of the some of the biggest cases, the installation itself costs more than the device itself. So the process installation, it's not uh, free of charge. So, so please describe and do a total, 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 uh, total cost, uh, total cost of ownership and return on investment calculation. What is happening quite often as well is the people are forgetting about the change management so that some new people will need to be will need to get trained and uh, what we have seen with some of the insurance companies for instance that the major hurdle was not the coverage was not the platform was not the software but was the legal side of the business so uh, you know the all the uh, responsibilities all the uh, 
legal legal frameworks it can be very tough in iot especially when you are handling uh, sensitive data or when when you have to ensure something so please don't uh, underestimate the legal part and prepare the legal part even before starting poc then uh, the next phase is the proof of concept proof of value if you need to do it we prefer not to do it or it should be preferred not to do it but but it's very hard to it's very hard to uh, avoid it you should be clearly what is the purpose you should clearly define what is the purpose of the pilot is it uh, do you want to test the coverage do you want to test integration do, do you want to test energy consumption those are the things that needs to be done and just for, for in order the proof of concept not to be just a gadget not to be a playground so you need to have a pretty well defined purposes and outcomes of the proof of concept the major thing uh, one of the one of the things that we see quite often is that the proof of concept is used as a sales tool which shouldn't be used because uh, we think we love the gadget. We, we love we love IoT. So we think that uh, oh, this is a really beautiful device. It really works. It, it can show you the position. It can show you the temperature, etc. So we are excited by it. But the customer is not so excited. They have it for something quite normal. So uh, showcasing that you really can show the position, position that you really can show the uh, the temperature. It's not something that's going to sell anything. IoT and our role in IoT is really more on the consulting side, uh, leading the customers through all through all the process of the digital company transformation and the devices and coverage and connectivity as a byproduct of, of this all. And when we do POC, POC uh, must be must have some some criteria. Uh, they should definitely be measurable and quantifiable. So uh, you must be able to tell after the POC whether the POC targets were 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 met and whether whether the POC was successful. Uh, I have seen some statistics where 90% of POCs ended up without any evaluation. So uh, you know they just uh, they just disappear in, in a vapor and nobody knows nobody knows precisely. Was it really successful or wasn't it success, successful because the acceptance criteria were not were not set up before? So please really put uh, uh, like packet flaws, uh, even some soft criteria like people like the design, people don't like the design, they like the application, they don't like the application. Those really should be should be set up before starting any POC. Also, don't forget that the company for whom you are doing the with whom you are doing the proof of concept they need to have some budget and committed and ton human resources for it you have seen also quite often when uh, uh, it departments wants to start the poc and then the people who should be testing it uh, they don't have they don't uh, receive the commitment for human resources so please have a commitment uh, set up a proper governance so set up a proper proper meetings uh, who will be evaluating who will be approving uh, who uh, well how the communication will be going on uh, during the proof of concept and set up also timing and milestones uh, because very often you know the proof of concept they can they can last for months and months and months without any outcome and that's not uh, very efficient so uh, Please don't forget that before starting any proof of concept, an agreement should be presigned and POC should be just used as a, to confirm the assumptions that are in the agreement. Uh, then we have some Sigfox specifics. We, we everyone, both the customers and uh, the integrators and Sigfox operators need to understand. Uh, and I think that those are the most important ones. When I read this slide again, I, I'm, I see one missing, but it can be, it can be, it can be. A, I will comment on that one. Uh, what is really, uh, what is, what is, what is the difference between the current devices that are in the market when you take, for instance, the tracking or when you, when you, when you look at the uh, temperature monitoring or vibration, vibration monitoring, is that. You, 
thanks to Sigfox, uh, we can really achieve very long battery lives. Even very small devices, when they are smart, so we, we can achieve very easily 10 years of battery life from, from the very small devices. Worldwide coverage, we have, we have, we have, we have uh, you definitely know about that. Uh, the worldwide coverage is quite important, not only because of the tracking use case, but it's also important because you can very easily, it's important for us as device manufacturers, because then we can have very easily leverage devices that are manufactured, that are produced for a use case in Japan, we can leverage them in Brazil, or we can leverage them in Canada. So from, from the point of ecosystem, this worldwide coverage, it's uh, very important and uh, makes a big difference to the other technologies. Uh, very limited in data rate, uh, that's for sure, uh, uh, both bytes. Uh, uh, the, the things can be overcome by doing two things. One is uh, having, uh, having uh, smart devices, so sending only, uh, only data that is relevant at the relevant time, and also encoding the, the data in a smart way. It's quite recently we had a nice use case in, in France where uh, we were we were uh, really like battling because the customer wanted to wanted to send the time in the universal time code format which is really, really long and you don't have space for it if, if you want to send more time slots you don't have space in the, you don't have space uh, for it in in sigfox payload so so uh, really because the programmers and the technical the cios of the big companies are not used to to, to, to squeeze the data into very small packets uh, it uh, requires a specific attention to the detail and uh, sometimes it, it's also very important. It's, it's, I think it's very good that you have a limitation. So you have a limitation to the data rate because this forces you to think more. If you have like gigabits of connectivity, you send you know, temperature each second and you don't care if you are limited by the data rate. So this is uh, this forces you to really think about the business case. One of the one of the ways that we over, so overcome the data rate uh, with with uh, with our devices is that we can uh, first we are supporting sending only one frame instead of three frames. Uh, the other one is that we are able to or we are supporting 600 bits per second encoding in RC1, uh, so we can send basically 18 times more data. Or 18 times more messages than with regular devices. Uh, this is something uh, reliable of data transfer and coverage. This is something that Sigfox doesn't, uh, or it's not talking that much about. Uh, they have they have that Sigfox is everywhere and all the time and with 100% coverage. And we have to be uh, truthful to our customers and we have to inform them properly that not the case. The same way as the LTE or GSM signal is not universal, you don't have uh, total coverage in all the France or in all the Czech Republic. The same applies for Sigfox. Uh, and it's very, again, one should be very frank to the customers. That's 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 uh, because they, uh, un unless you are really frank and you tell them, okay, we understand the phones and this leakage detectors. They will work for 90% of the customers, but they will not work for 10% of the customers. So even during the qualification, the customer either tells you, no, it must work for 99% of the customers, or they say, okay, we are fine with it if it works for 90%. So this can be, uh, this can, we can work with that one. Uh, for the data transfer coverage, of course, you need to, to use highest quality radio performance devices. Uh, that's quite clear. Uh, what is important is, and what we have implemented uh, in our firmware, in our software, is the redundancy schemes. So we are able, for instance, to to encode into one message five different temperature measurements. And if you are, if you lose four messages in a row, so we are able to reconstruct all the data even from one message. So the data redundancy is uh, quite important in the cases where you really need to have the whole uh, full data. Uh, and we know that Sigfox can have some losses in, in, the, in, the, in the transfer, in the, in, the, in the signal transfers. And also don't forget about the local densification through micro base stations. 
we, we are currently working on really two nice use cases. Uh, uh, one is the office office chair office chair uh, monitoring where we are using the micro base stations. The other is a really nice use case with hospitals in Germany, uh, where uh, you know one micro base station can basically cover the whole uh, hospital complex, and then we are using simple packs for monitoring of the usage of some of the devices uh, in within the hospitals. So even if you don't have if, even if you don't have uh, full uh, Sigfox coverage at the hospital or at the hotel or at the, at the office office buildings, uh, so one one can leverage the micro base station quite quite nicely. And the last one is uh, that if you compare Sigfox currently with Sora or with NBLT devices, they are pretty cheap. So you can achieve pretty cheap devices, and we have been asked quite often from Laura from Laura whether we, sh we, we, we would be ready to produce some of the devices uh, in, uh, for LoRa. It doesn't make sense for us, uh, but uh, due to the worldwide coverage and due to the production world, to the, to the production for the worldwide market, uh, one can achieve really a very good uh, cheap device. I, you know, my marketing always tells me do not talk about cheap devices, uh, talk about well-priced devices or good price performance ratio. But uh, for, for, the, for the simplification, I'm talking uh, cheap devices, so good quality, good quality, good price devices. Uh, what we are trying to achieve at Simple Hardware. You know that our roots are with the Sigfox operators in the Central Europe. Uh, I'm still I'm still co-owner of a couple of the operators uh, in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Switzerland, Austria. And uh, we lacked we we really lacked devices. We lacked, we, the, we were missing devices that would have a good price point, that would have a good radio performance, that would, that would last on the batteries for 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 a long time. So once we'll, once I did put up the coverage of those countries, I decided that I would uh, accept any challenge and and uh, try to do hardware. Uh, don't do hardware, please. Uh, never do hardware. Hardware is one of the really most complicated projects. Uh, I'm from the internet side, and from the software side. Uh, hardware is something that. I would say several levels higher in complexity and, and, and challenge, challengeness uh, than anything else that I have seen so far. So I have a big respect for all those automakers and all those people that they do they do produce something physical. Uh, we we try to uh, to do the hardware uh, to have uh, to have four four uh, four major criteria. One is that we want it to be simple to use uh, because we have a lot of sensors inside, so it's not very easy to program it or it's not very easy to understand it from the integrator point of view, but it should be very easy to understand it from the end user point of view. And we are also shipping all the hardware with full IoT software platform support. So uh, starting from day one, you can start tracking, you can start measuring tem temperature. You don't need to do any programming in order to get the data and to visualize the data out of the devices. Uh, we also try to achieve very long battery lives. Uh, we are using we are using uh, strobing. We are using special techniques in order to achieve a really uh, low low power consumption. Uh, we need to do it because we don't. You know, you can have either big batteries, uh, and you don't need to take care of the battery consumption, or you, you have tiny batteries as we have, and then you have really to concentrate on on the battery on, on the battery life. So we are pretty proud with the battery life of our devices. Uh, design robustness. Mm, again, it was a challenge to do a very small and waterproof device. We are using ultrasound welding. We use special buttons, so the button doesn't have any holes in it. Uh, the devices that are shock and heat resistant. We even have a special, a special device that you can boil, uh, and it resists temperature above 100 degrees. So this is this is this this is this is quite important if you, especially if you want to use them in industrial environments. 
And then we are, what we are really proud of is the firmware inside. It's always evolving. So it's always a evolving thing. It's not a static thing. So we don't produce like one one device with one firmware and then we produce it again and again. And for the next two or three years, we do we we, we are updating the firmware on a continual on a continual basis. Uh, currently, only with the shipping device with with, with with the device that is being shipped. But we are working uh, quite intensively on the project that you should be able to update the firmware, firmware yourself. You will be able to update once you purchase the device. You will be able to update the firmware yourself. Uh, so about the smart, uh, one of the big differentiation between Sigfox is that with you know I'll take the example of a data logger. If you measure temperature. So if a data logger, you put the data logger into the into the into the into the uh, into the stock into into your into your store store room, and the data logger it's totally dumb, it's totally stupid. It doesn't do anything else than it just measures temperature each five minutes and it stores the temperature and then another five minutes stores the temperature and then you come come to the data logger with a USB stick and you get the data from the data logger. So he doesn't understand. He, he, the data log doesn't understand anything about the temperature. What we do is that uh, we try the devices to be really smart. And what we do is that we, for instance, we measure the temperature again. We measure it uh, each five minutes, but we don't log it. We look at it either as uh, we, we look whether the temperature has changed, and only when the temperature has changed, for instance we send the information. So if the temperature is always five degrees, five degrees, five degrees, you don't need to fire any event, you don't need to send this information. Uh, and you save a lot of battery life, you save a lot of processing power. Uh, the other thing is that we also can aggregate data. So for instance, with the, with the, again, with the temperature monitoring is what we do is that, uh, again, you can, uh, you can measure the temperature each five minutes but you can aggregate those data of those three intervals into one message and instead of sending three three messages um, uh, within 15 minutes we send just one message and with those three 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 measurements and we use also smart compression so we are using the simple time compression for any any type of information about timing we are using simple temp compression for the uh, for the temperature measurement, so we are able to, to, to send information about temperature within one byte. The same, uh, we are able to, we are using only one byte to send any, any type of time information. And uh, another concept of the SMART is that we provide redundancy transfer. So as I was describing that we are using, uh, uh, that we are, uh, that we, we can Within one message, we can repeat past measurements, or we can we can send past measurements. And if the message gets get, gets lost, we are able to reconstruct all the data from it. And we are also trying to be at good price points and have a good uh, sales and technical support. It's all, of course, uh, it's a, it's a moving target. We are not perfect. Uh, we are we are not a, we are not a big company. We are not a forty thousand people companies out is uh, but we are trying hard to we are trying hard our best um, this is a short overview of the hardware that we are offering currently we have four series i'll start with the embedded embedded is basically simple pack without or even simple MDSP without any casings so this is our i would say ultimate goal is to embed uh, IoT directly into the produced devices, into the chairs, into the boxes, into the pallets, and not to have it as an add-on. And we have solutions for the embedded, uh, and we have customers that are using embedded already, uh, already based on our based on the simple pack simple pack platform. Uh, then we have the professional series. Uh, we have just, uh, I would say. Today we are announcing the Simple Pack 4 0, so, so it will be fast when I'm talking about Simple Pack 4 0. Uh, it's, a, it's an evolution of the Simple Pack 3 0. 
improving some of the parameters, some of the some of the radio performances, and some of the battery consumptions. But they are roughly the same. So if you if you have if you have worked in Simple Pack 3.0, you don't need to have to upgrade to Simple Pack 4.0 right now. If you were not happy with Simple Pack 3.0 and some of the POC, please uh, try Simple Pack 4.0 because we, we did make a huge, huge progress in some of the parameters. So, and in the parentheses, you can always see the number of messages that the devices that the devices are are supporting. Uh, Simple meter is uh, it's a uh, onward device for temperature and humidity monitoring basically simple leak is the water leakage sensor you know that one and we have been talking since few months about the simple industry and simple industry hot uh, we are a little bit delayed with the casings we just got today the latest version of the casings uh, what was the major major issue that we had is that we didn't want to have replaceable battery in the, in the original design but some of the customers required to have the replaceable battery. So we had to redesign a little bit the casings and you'll see it in the next slide. And then we have also the check for the safe force coverage measurement that's still in production and we have we have a complete dashboard for it. So if you need to measure the, the, the coverage of, of safe Fox as the installation place, check Fox is the device to use. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's how does simple and does simple pack looks like. Uh, uh, small uh, primary battery, not replaceable, non non rechargeable. Mm, uh, uh, what's inside is that on the left side you can see the Sigfox multiband antenna designed by Sigfox IoT agency. You can see the button, you can see the photo sensor, light sensor, which is used, for instance, to detect uh, opening of a case or of a, of a parcel. So you don't measure the, for instance, location of the parcel all the time, but only when you open the parcel, the light gets in. Then you trigger, you trigger the position measurement and you can, you can tell this parcel was open at this moment and it was delivered at that address. Uh, <clears throat> we have also uh, a high, high luminosity red LED. Uh, you, you are asking why red, why not white or green? Uh, the, the, the issue is with voltage uh, because the, the, red, the, red, uh, the red LED works to the lowest voltage available. So for the moment we are using red. For some of the use cases we could use a different color as well. And we support <coughs> external micro switches or thermistors, especially in the simple industry case, but the PCBs are the same. And we have also a buzzer, not a very loud one, but for some use cases usable. And we have the read switch, uh, the read magnetic switch, the classical one, when you have this external magnet and you have this, you have the, you have like the, the door guard and you put the, the magnet uh, either to the vicinity or out of the field of the of the read switch so it, it can it can measure revolutions it can measure openings of stuff it can it can do a lot of stuff and this is simple pack from the other side you see it's pretty tightly packed again the sigfox antenna on the right side uh, wi-fi antenna on, on the left side low power, low power ultra low power st st micro st micro process mcu uh, then we have ST, ST micro transceiver low power and we have accelerometer, we have gyroscope, we have uh, temperature and humidity, temperature and humidity sensor and we have also the Wi-Fi module in order to do, we are not communicating by, by Wi-Fi but we use Wi-Fi for the Wi-Fi uh, tracking. And yeah, and we, we have in the next version, we are also it's already in the R&D and it's working. So we are supporting some more sensors. We are supporting barometric pressure and we are supporting e-compass. So we are supporting more stuff in the future. We will be supporting more stuff in the future. Uh, maybe even GPS. So the sample meter, it's not the best renderer, but it's the latest renderer that I have. Uh, it's, um, this looks big, but it's a really small device. 
it's it's like five centimeters on on nine centimeters uh, supporting uh, 100,000 messages for any kind of uh, indoor uh, temperature and humidity monitoring. And then we have this simple industry. This is also the latest renderer where you can already see the the holders for the the holders for the battery. And uh, basically, the the Sigfox antenna, the main PCB. We are using the same PCB as in the simple pack. We are just putting bigger batteries. We have a little bit more space, so we can put external sensors uh, onto the PCB. But all the programming, all the all the behavior of the devices um, is is the same. Uh, so now to the now to the use cases. I'm just checking my time. Uh, what I think is really important is to think out of the box. So don't always think about tracking or don't always think about temperature monitoring, although some of the most obvious use cases, but try to think uh, what kind of business, new business opportunities IoTs, uh, IoT can bring. Because if you will be hitting this niche market, so you will be first in the niche market and you can you can have a really nice, uh, nice, I would say, uh, a nice profit out of this niche market. You know, you don't you, you don't need to go always after the biggest ones. Uh, the other is think about the business case first. Really, don't don't think uh, don't think about the the devices first. Think about the business case first. Then look what kind what what and we can even help you. So if you, if you come to us and you ask us, for instance, and it has happened to, to us very often. If you say, if you if you ask us, for instance, we have this, we want to do monitoring of the bus seats or airplane seats, uh, then we can think together how, how to best monitor the bus seats or how to best monitor the airplane seats, whether it's achievable, whether it's not achievable, at, what, at which price point. And uh, then we can either suggest our devices or we, we, we also quite often suggest devices from different manufacturers because we cannot do everything under the sun so uh, don't hesitate to contact us and to ask us uh, what 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 would be the best approach for this use case and also please be be open to us you know we are not going to chase your customers very very often the people are very secretive and they don't want to tell us oh it's it's a customer we have this case we cannot tell you so we are we are we don't have really time and we don't have resources to chase your customers in order to uh, to take it away from you. Please be as open as, as possible with the device manu with the device manufacturers because they can advise you the best. And before uh, looking for a device, please always look at the at the business description as a business description and definition. Uh, because uh, basically what is what is what even what are the triggers for the events what are the timing how often do you need to information and which resolution and which precision how fast you needed to have the, the this uh, for instance temperature change information how long you need the batteries to last uh, what is the data robustness you are asking for those are the little things that we as device manufacturers or we as consultants need to understand in order to advise you best what kind of device to use, uh, what setup to use in your in your individual use case. And please be, be aware that all those criteria, they go against each other. So you cannot have the cheapest device with the longest battery life and with the, be best, with the best resolution or the best precision. So please, please uh, be reasonable and always calculate it based on the total cost of ownership, on the return on investment, and on the business case that you have. Uh, I have two examples here, a uh, little bit old ones, but uh, what, is, uh, what is really nice about them is that uh, we, we conceive them uh, without thinking about the business cases. So we conceive them as a, as a demonstration of the, the technology. We distributed uh, coffee machine monitoring. We distributed simple packs to all the six operators worldwide. So we distributed 60, 60 simple packs. 
and we are able to to monitor what is the temperature at, at, at the place what is the you know, how many coffees got produced uh, how many times the coffee machine got clean so we, we can we can we can uh, we can uh, uh, you can get uh, real-time information from all over the world showcasing the Sigfox Australia worldwide network. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, two biggest uh, coffee machine producers in the world uh, uh, picked up the idea, came to us, and we are currently developing uh, a specific solution based on artificial intelligence in order to monitor really some of the best Italian coffee machines and some of the of some of the biggest, I would say, biggest uh, coffee beans distributors in the world. So, based on this on, on this project that uh, was more on the marketing side, we were able to conclude uh, to, to conclude a really nice a nice use case and sell uh, sell the devices. Uh, the other one is in the classical feature monitoring that I have been talking about since I would say two years now because they are a little bit more uh, office chair monitoring than they are i think than there are pallets in the wall so office chair monitoring is, is and it's it can be nicely covered because you can have the microwave station it's not uh, it, it's a very really nice use case and we just got an order of 3000 3000 from a really major a major international company it's under nda so i cannot i, I cannot talk to talk about that one so it's 3,000 for the Czech Republic only, for 3,000 employees here, and they have 300,000 employees worldwide. So we are we, we hope that they will be able, if it's if it's successful, so they will be able to expand the project um, to all the offices in the world. So you will, if you are a Sigfus operator, uh, you you will be definitely calling on you in order to sell this solution in your in your country. Uh, yeah, I would I, I could talk about uh, some more use cases that we are working at. The, we are posting them, uh, I would say, uh, continuously on our blog. So if you if you go to our blog site, you can see some of this uh, uh, some of this uh, projects and customers. We currently have 500 customers, so it's not easy to talk about all of them. Uh, but we do everything from coaching monitoring to to Wi-Fi tracking to pole inclination, uh, red red trap monitoring, uh, fuse monitoring. So there are a lot of lot of projects going on, and if everything everything goes according to plan, so millions of devices and millions of connectivities will be sold in the coming few years. Uh, call to action. Uh, we have prepared for you the sales checklist. If you go to the download section of our website, so uh, you can download them from from there. You can print out them. We have one general qualification and discovery checklist. Then we have one specific one for logistics. So please, uh, it's not something that you should give to the customers, but you can give it. It's not it's not a secret, but it's something that you should work as a preparatory document with the customers. Uh, then you can also download uh, overview of 50 use cases. They are still, all of them are still totally valid. Uh, and please uh, watch or download. We have the presentation. You can download if you don't want want to watch it. Our past webinars. Uh, among them, I think it's some of them are really important, like the basics of sensors, because the salespeople need to understand how the sensors work. Sigfox coverage, Monarch, worldwide tracking, uh, insurance verticals. Uh, so some of the more vertical oriented uh, webinars are available at, at, the, at the webinar website and we are also launching a new uh, series of webinars that will be in April and May, coaching monitoring, you know, simple hardware embedded solutions and uh, Legionella monitoring solution. So those are the things that are, uh, that are, that are coming in April and May. And now it's time for your questions. Yes. yes, we have some. Thank you so much, Pavel. Amazing presentation. And no doubt about that. Thank you so much. We have some questions for you. Uh, actually, the question I can, the first one I can answer quickly if we're going to get this presentation. Yes, 
We're going to share the slides with you in the follow up email. And also, this session is recorded right now. So, we're going to share it on our YouTube channel and it will be available maximum next week. So, this is a, definitely a yes. Uh, so, the question for you, Pavel, the first one from Asman Can you elaborate more on the smart compression that you on were the, mentioning on the smart compression? On the smart compression, okay. Uh, let's take the example of the timing, for instance. Uh, if you take, uh, if you take, uh, how to encode time, how to encode, how, how to encode and encode time information. So either you can use a universal time format, the Linux time format, which I think it's. I don't know, it's six bytes or something. It's it's really long. It's really long because you know you have this, you have very high precision and then you have to record all the years and everything because it it has an absolute position. Or what we are what we are doing is that we are using simple time encoding, where in the first two bits we are telling you what kind of uh, format it's going to follow. I'm not I'm not a so the technical, so I don't know if it's two bits or three bits, but it's describing the recommendation. And basically, it tells you the following: the following bits are going to report either seconds, minutes, hours, or days. And you are able to to encode like 100, uh, 100 up to 128, uh, 27 uh, uh, values in the second half or in the second part of the byte. So using one byte, uh, you can get a uh, timing information from ranging from seconds till 127 days. And this is, this is I think it's, it's, a, it's a very good approach because then you can do a redundancy, you can do you, you, you can do a lot more in, in the payload than if you would be reporting the absolute precise time that some of the customers uh, require. And you can always, uh, this, uh, this simple time, you can always relate to the timestamp of the message. So, so if you and you know Sigfox, we don't keep a real time clock. So uh, we are we are not going to achieve like millisecond precision. It's Sigfox is not uh, it's Sigfox is not. Uh, I would say you, you don't use Sigfox in use cases where you would need millisecond precision, but where one one or two second precision is okay. So you are, you can relate this uh, this time to the timestamp of the message, and you can deduce the precise timing from that one. Okay, thank you so much, Pavel. We have uh, two other questions regarding if the deck and the record of the session will be shared. Yes, <laughs> it will be sent to you through email and also available online. Uh, the next question from Asman, uh, no, uh, Arish, sorry. Uh, what are the most common Sigfox use cases in your business? Uh, that's that's a question that I'm always receiving, not not only as a device maker, but as a Sigfox Sigfox operator who has been in the business since five years, I would say. And uh, there is not a single there is not a single answer to that one. Uh, if you have some kind of expertise, let's say if you are in the coaching monitoring, if you are in the in the pharmacy distribution business, so go up to the coaching monitoring. If you are in the logistics business and you understand logistics, go up to the logistics business. If you are in the wood industry, go after the wood industry. It's very basically that, that's the same that's the same question would be. You know, when I was at the beginning of the internet, so I was one of the one of the first one doing the portals even before Google, and people were coming to us and they would say, "What the internet will be for? You know, what 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 would be the best use case for the internet?" Um, and I would say that this, the same type of question would be, "What the best case of the IoT?" You don't have the best case for internet. You don't have the best case for IoT. It just the IoT will become part of our life. The same way as internet became part of our life. Thank I don't you, know. I, I, I understand. I didn't understand. I didn't answer it perfectly, uh, but at least that's currently our understanding of the situation. 
It, it's your answer and it's a great one. Indeed, the use case should not be driven what you're doing, but your expertise and new sector should be helping you to launch new use case, definitely. Uh, we have another question regarding uh, actually we have plenty of uh, <laughs> we have plenty of questions. Um, I, I cannot see them. Can I see them? No, unfortunately no. I'm, I'm, I will read them to, to you. I think it's just when you are a moderator. So one okay. from Alessandro. When you say it supports external switch, do you mean I can connect external sensor? So meaning to the simple hardware? Like a pulse counter, for example? Yes, you can. That's uh, something new uh, that we are uh, working. We can we can now connect to we can now connect to uh, any kind of so either it can be uh, simple switches or it can be two ADC converters. In the new version of the of the, of the of the of the PCB and in the new version of the central pack, you can connect to external sensors. Another question regarding simple pack from uh, Jaffa. Is it possible to add an external temperature sensor to simple pack four? What we are doing is for the external, we have uh, complete uh, for the temperature sensors and for the cold chain monitoring, we have special white papers on the on our website. Uh, if you ping me, uh, you can get them as well. Uh, they are there if you wouldn't be able to find them. So ping me and I'll, I'll I'll advise where to find them. Uh, we are not going to do any kind of external temperature sensor with a simple pack itself because of the size. But we are we we do have external temperature sensor with the simple industry. So we have both uh, both on the case temperature sensor and we have also a temperature sensor on the on 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 the wire on the cable. So we have temperature sensors either on the case or on the cable, especially for the legional monitoring. We have we have special clips for the pipes and we have external temperature temperature sensors. Okay, thank you. Another question regarding the simple pack. Uh, and first of all, Andy saying thank you for the great webinar. <laughs> uh, he's asking, <laughs> he's asking you. Can you tell us more about the external point for transmitters in Simple Pack 4? We might want to connect Simple Pack 4 to another transmitter to act as a freezer temperature monitoring, was as well as monitoring its location. Do you have any suggestion? So we are using. I don't don't know what I I got precisely the question, but we are doing. Uh, what we are doing is that we are you can you can use the simple pack uh, 4.0 in two scenarios you can use it as an embedded solution so if you we are doing it order with some customers that you take just the pcb and the battery and you put it directly into the plastic mold and you produce it directly directly uh, directly with the, with the fridge or directly with the with the, with the casing with the case with the big case or you can use you can use uh, because simple pack uh, supports precise monet some precise temperature monitoring and precise wi-fi wi-fi position monitoring the only issue with a simple pack 4.0 is because it's it's uh, airtight it's watertight it's waterproof so the temperature uh, the temperature sensor which is inside is precise up to half a degree but it takes some time in order to the temperature to get to the sensor so the temperature change uh, is not immediate as we have with the external sensor but it can take three to four minutes uh, in order the device to record the new temperature again but again there's a complete white paper about that one on, on our website okay i don't thank know whether, you, I answered, whether i answered the question if it was about external antenna so external we we are currently not planning to do any kind of external antennas uh, it's kind of complicated from the radio point of view it would have it would require to to redo to redo to reduce redu a lot of things and we are quite happy currently with the sigbox agency based uh, performance of the antenna okay thank you pavel Another question regarding devices from Mayor is asking regarding your current devices lineup, what is your challenges when you're designing and developing your hardware product? Great question. Mechanics. <laughs> no, 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 mechanics. <laughs> uh, you know, doing 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 the uh, 
so so I would say two things: uh, managing people and then mechanics, uh, because we are you know we, we are trying to 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 work with smart people, and the, the smart people are overloaded and to chase the programmers and to chase the proper people that, that's uh, one of the biggest challenges i would say uh, and then the mechanics mechanics especially with the simple industry doing a pcb is not such a big it's, it's uh, doing a pcb it's not such it's a master but it's not something that uh, it's easy to do because you have a lot of people who understand it you can simulate it you can you can do different versions but doing mechanics, it's it's that, that stuff because you have many options. Uh, what kind of plastics you are going to use? What kind of design? What kind of sizing? What kind of battery holders we are going to use? So mechanics is the most challenging stuff. Okay, thank you. We have two last questions regarding the um, the COVID nineteen situation. Uh, so one from uh, Zenco is asking, do you have any IoT use case you can share with uh, the current COVID-19 situation? If you have any IoT use case? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what we were we were trying uh, even already in January we were we were we were in contact with Singstar Hong Kong that they wanted to use simple packs for uh, people tracking in lockdown and but the government uh, they requ required gps devices so we didn't uh, this, this didn't progress and then we were now we were supplying some of the devices to the hospital as buttons so people can in, when they are in distress so they can use buttons we think one of the one of the nice use cases in the future if the if the vaccine will be available so the vaccine at least the vaccines for the sars they need to be kept at precise uh, so they are deeply normally they are deeply frozen to 160 degrees then they are defrosted at the distribution point and they must be delivered within few few days to the doctors and they need to be kept in some kind of temperature range so for the vaccines we think that sick folks because the vaccine will will have to be distributed worldwide so we, we think that for the vaccine distribution, uh, Sigfox could be a really nice solution for the culture and monitoring. Uh, but that's currently all what we are thinking of because all other stuff, it's, um, you know, you can definitely have a uh, simple packers or, or, or any kind of button as, 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 a, as, a, as a distress button. But because COVID is life threatening and you know that Sigfox uh, it's uh, definitely a good technology, very good with, with very good reliability. But uh, in life threatening situations, you should have at least two channels, two communication channels. And we don't have currently two communication channels with a button. So I would be double hesitant to use it as um, in a life threatening situation to rely just on Sigfox. I would, I would better have something that would support at least two channels in, to communicate. So that's. Uh, uh, one of the nice use cases that we are currently, but it's not directly COVID related, but it's 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 a kind of funny situation. We, we are supporting one of the cloisters in France, and one of their brothers gets lost in the cloister complex, and they cannot find him. The issue is that they don't have, they cannot use a GPS tracker or they cannot use a mobile phone because there's no mobile mobile signal there. So what we are trying to, to, to see whether we'll be able to, to locate him using, they have tens of Wi-Fi's within the cloister uh, and they have Sigfox uh, and we'll see well, whether we'll be able to locate the browser uh, using just the Wi-Fi tracking. But this is not that, this is, this is a nice use case where you can leverage Sigfox and Wi-Fi without having any GSM for people tracking. But it's not directly, it's not directly COVID tracking. But yeah, one of the things that you could use definitely is, and I think that we were on the on the project as well, uh, that you can use it for tracking, for instance, the respirators delivery. You know, there was some mismatch uh, to which countries the respirators should come from China. So for those tracking of the of of, of the stuff, you can you can definitely use you can use uh, simple pack devices. But we were, we were thinking hard about whether any kind of specific, specific, and I was I was involved because I was I was involved with some of the projects with the with the Czech uh, uh, crisis committee, so I was I was really deep in the in in the in, in, in the COVID management situation, 
uh, but I, we didn't we didn't find any, any, anything very specific. If you would have any idea, we are open to discuss it. But we didn't have, we, we didn't find anything specific that could help the situation. Okay, thank you so much for your answer, Pavel. It was uh, the last question regarding the current uh, COVID nineteen situation. Um, would you like to add something to conclude? Yeah, I just hope that everyone stay, everyone uh, like sort of survives nicely the COVID. Uh, it seems it's it's really challenging, and we should have we should we should approach it. I think with cool heads, and we should protect the, the risk groups. And uh, but we shouldn't we shouldn't be afraid, and we should be we should be facing it facing it uh, frontally. I would say, and. Uh, you know that's uh, that's very important is that uh, people are not locked down in their homes indefinitely and that they uh, keep keep the life on Totally agree. Thank you so much, Pavel, for this presentation. We had great question, and I have to say the participants were very attentive and stay until the end. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and. Uh, Thank you everyone for joining us today. We're going to share the presentation, the link and contact of Pavel's uh, through the follow-up email. So see you soon at the next webinar. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks.